Hi guys, welcome back to Murder and Retrograde. We're back here for another very somewhat recent case and um, some new developments happening in the last several months. So we're here to, to talk about it. Yes, so today we are going to be talking about the case of Molly Tibbetts. On July 18th, 2018, Molly Cecilia Tibbetts, who was a Taurus, just like our lovely Jenna, lived in Brooklyn, Iowa. And uh, this night on July 18th, she went for an evening jog. She was an avid runner, having been on the cross country team throughout school. I don't know how people did that. Did you ever do cross country? Oh my gosh, no. I could never. I could never. I, I'm so envious of people that are like, I'm gonna go on a run. Like they no, enjoy I it. Am, I'm that meme or TikTok where it's like, if I'm being, if I'm, I'll run when I'm being chased. Like I'm not yeah. running for fun. Like it's not yeah. happening. <laughs> Uh, so Molly was house sitting for her boyfriend of three years, who was over 130 miles away in Dubuque, uh, Iowa, for work. Uh, Dalton was his name, her boyfriend, and uh, he lived with his brother and his brother's fiance in an apartment in Brooklyn, Iowa. Molly Tibbetts was last seen at approximately 7:30 p.m. by someone who saw her jogging. The following day, Dalton, her boyfriend, texted Molly in the morning, good morning, like he always did. And for the first time ever, he didn't receive a response. And when Molly didn't show up for work, which she had never done, her coworkers got really worried and called Dalton in Dubuque. She had never missed work, like I said, and she had never even been late. She had an amazing work ethic, and so people were immediately worried. Um, so I love that her boyfriend immediately called her parents because we've heard so many stories where that does not occur. And they right away called the police and reported her missing. Um, authorities announced that the last confirmed communication with Molly Tibbetts was shortly before she left for her run. She had spoken with her boyfriend. So that was the last time anyone had spoken with her. And since her boyfriend was out of town, as I said, he told police that he did receive a Snapchat message from Molly later in the evening that appeared to show her indoors, which would mean she came back from the run and was in the apartment. It came through at 1030 p.m., which would seem to make that sound right. But who knows? We've also heard of cases where Snapchat, the time stamp is off. Uh, there's also proof on Molly's computer, though, that she was online studying or, until around 1030 p.m but then nothing, no social media, no sightings of her, nothing. The University of Iowa student, Molly, disappeared and it didn't seem as though anyone had any idea of where she had gone. She had no plans for anything. She was house sitting, she had responsibilities and she was a very responsible girl. Yeah, and it just her shows like if she's not answering her boyfriend like she always does and she's not showing up for work, you know, in these senses, it's really good to have like a scheduled kind of, uh, day every day so people know, like raise the red flag immediately when something's going on so I'm I'm happy to hear that everything kind of uh was brought to the police right away because yeah obviously something's going on when she's just nowhere to be found and not answering yeah. anybody and everyone seemed to be doing the right thing mm -hmm. for weeks authorities poured over hundreds of leads in this case one after the next was thoroughly investigated. Painstaking work that TV and movies make look so exciting is actually painfully slow and frustrating, and these cops were relentless. <clears throat> One lead sounded really promising. It was a sighting of Molly at a truck stop in Missouri, so they went to uh, check that out. Sadly, it the tip was fruitless. And then- the heart of these cases too, I feel like so many people want to to help and they give these tips and it ends up being from all over the world and none of them are actually real tips. It's, and then that yeah. has to be so frustrating because it's like, thank you for wanting to help, but like, it's yeah. also wasting so much resources and time. And in the beginning, I'm sure when the tips start coming in family, you know, every single one you, you get hopeful and oh, then 100%. you just get your heart broken. And I'm sure you get to a point where you're like, I'm not going to you know, even want to hear about it until I know for sure that it's her. Yeah. Um, so on July 24th, the state investigators, along with the FBI, took over the case, which was now garnering national attention. On the same day, they also announced that they were calling off all search efforts. 
Now, they had received 2,500 tips at this point and conducted 500 interviews altogether. So it wow. sounds like they had some information if they were calling off a search. Mm -hmm. So we found out, we find out later that they did find evidence and good evidence. Molly wore a Fitbit bracelet, which how many times have we heard that this I mean, has helped solve crimes? Recently I mean, too. We've been talking about this a lot. Like your devices, they're, they're, well, I yeah. mean, help in these situations, but if you're on the Absolutely. other end of it, it ain't helping you. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> So as we know, Fitbits, or if you don't know, they uh, record your heart rate, your um, oxygen level, your GPS location, where you have, how many steps you've taken, all of that. And uh, now police had a clear path of where Molly had been on the night that she went missing. So they were getting even closer to the truth. And so they announced the police that they were focusing on four very specific locations most likely due to this Fitbit data. Those locations were her boyfriend's home in Brooklyn, Iowa, a car wash in town, a truck stop, that was the one in Missouri that they had checked out and wasn't her, and then two separate family farms in the area. Monetary rewards for information leading to the closure of this case had reached over $366,000 at this point. Still, it appeared there was no primary suspect, but this whole community was out in full force, like really, really looking for her. Is this and a on, small town? Like I know Iowa is, can be, have a lot of like very small <clears throat> towns, excuse me, but do we know in this, in this Brooklyn, Iowa, like what, how big or small it was? It's really rural. I asked my dad cause he grew up in Iowa and he said it's, well, I mean, he probably has a different view from four decades ago, but, but maybe not. I don't know. We might've drove through there in our last trip, but no, it's, it's very rural and just like family farms, like usually a one strip downtown, your typical Midwestern quiet town. Yeah. Um, so on July 31st, Pella police said that they were looking for a perpetrator who was photographing female joggers that Friday night that she went missing. This man, when he heard he was being looked for, promptly turned himself in, admitted to taking the pictures, and he was thoroughly checked out by authorities, and he didn't have anything to do with the case. But why are you taking pictures of female joggers? <laughs> Creeper. Yeah, let's hope he, they, uh, well, I would assume he was scared straight after being uh, looked for as a murderer. Let's hopefully. hope. Let's hope. But um, I don't know, maybe there's something about those jogging moves that really get him going. Okay, anyway. Um, so on August 1st, Wayne Cheney, a local farmer, was questioned and his on his farm and his home was searched as well as the farm and his cell phone was taken overnight and combed through completely. And all the, the media heard about this. They came to his farm. Of course, I don't know why this happens, but he came out and talked and he was talking and talking and talking and talking. And the first interview I saw, I was like, uh, oh, he looks really nervous and this is strange. Why did they come to this farm that, you know, showed her Fitbit data, but nothing of interest was found in the search. They didn't find any clothes, any blood, nothing. So the search continued. On August 3rd, police held a press conference with little to no new information and people were slowly beginning to lose hope. Sadly, just two days later on August 5th, the body of a woman in her early 20s is found about an hour's drive southeast of Brooklyn, Iowa. On August 6th, Robert Tibbetts, Molly's dad, comes on TV to announce that the body found was not Molly. He urges the public to keep searching. Now, Jenna, we've this, talked about this before, okay, but so why do they always find bodies when they're going out and looking for bodies? This just happened or well, has been happening. So since they've been doing searches, well, they, I don't know if they're still doing them every weekend, but for um, Maya yeah. Molete, every single time they go up for a search, they find a body every single time. It's terrifying how many I know. remains, whether it's self-inflicted or someone, something foul, you know, play it's been involved in it. it. It's kind of shocking. I never even imagined that there were so many dead people around. Like it's so scary. I know. And I mean, is it, 
like are they these suicides or these accidental it's so it's so strange i just was reading about a case that was just solved it's a a jane doe from the 70s and they finally solved it thanks to geneal genealogy and nobody ever looked for her and it's it's heartbreaking she had a family but i guess it does happen and people don't report people missing and it's just unnerving right it's like Mm -hmm. why are we not finding these are bodies being dumped this often you know well like in the maya case i think there was at least four other bodies that were found while they were searching and i'm like okay this is terrifying especially since we live so close i don't want to yeah the it's only happened thing actually I- down the street from me too <laughs> so sad <laughs> so sad oh my god it's uncomfortable okay the only going. thing that I can say about Maya that might make you feel better might not is it was in Chula Vista and there's so so close to the border and the cartel is right across the border it could be a lot of cartel body dumpings or or, or things like that so that that'll make you feel better right <laughs> Also safe. Thank you. <laughs> well, thank goodness you're not a drug dealer. Um, so her dad came on and said to keep searching. And on August 8th, Molly's boyfriend's brother, who uh, lived with his boyfriend, Blake, is questioned on Fox News. And he said that he found no signs of struggle in the apartment when he returned. And he also said Molly, he said of Molly, quote, she was little, but she would have done something. People say this a lot, but in her case, I can see it. Um, You know, like she was an athlete. She was so responsible. And as we know, you know, when somebody goes into fight or flight, people usually freeze or they act. And it seems like he's saying, I think she would have fought. And he didn't see signs of struggle in the apartment. So that seemed like a pretty good um, indication that nothing had happened at least in that apartment yeah so at this point her family really had hope and everyone continued to search for molly then on august 21st iowa police announced they have found yet another body in powashek county which is where the city of brooklyn is located an autopsy was conducted and it was announced that indeed the body of molly tibbetts had been found by a farmer in the early hours of august 21st on a small farmland it turns out it wasn't just luck or endless police work searching alone that found her the authorities had been led to this exact site they were led there by a now prime suspect so just like we said they had been working diligently behind the scenes and they did have a suspect the entire time his name was 20 or sorry he was 24 year old christian behina rivera and he was a gemini he worked on a farm near the crime scene um so he was a farm worker obviously authorities said that the 24 year old admitted to following her and then confronting the university of iowa student while she was jogging on july 18th but he claimed that he blacked out after he confronted her According to the criminal complaint, which is difficult to read, um, police obtained surveillance video showing Molly jogging by the streets of Boundary and Middle and a dark colored Chevy Malibu, like the one Christian was seen driving or was driving at the time is seen following her. Mm -hmm. And it's just, he's stalking her. Yeah. So he drove up behind Molly. He got out of the car to talk to her. This is his story. Sure. He admitted that he was stalking her as she ran. She yelled as soon as she saw him, picked up her phone and said that she was calling the police. Then he says he blacked out and he says this happens to him. He gets angry. He doesn't remember anything. So apparently he woke up driving. He was at an intersection and he glanced down and saw an AirPod or an earphone or something and he said when he saw that it all came back to him and so he turned around to go back to where he had um where he had first seen molly and looked in the trunk and her body was in the trunk and there was blood on her head Hmm. so he drove to a farmland he then got her out of the trunk carried her over his shoulders for about 20 yards he's not a big guy either he's like five foot six hundred and forty pounds and um carried her 20 yards 
dumped her body, left her face up and covered her with, um, you know, old, uh, brush and and corn stalks and and things like that and left her there so law enforcement were able to confirm where rivera was where he said he had gone and driven via his phone's gps as well as his car and it matched up with all of those points at which he had explained his side of the story from memory christian then took authorities to where he said he had left molly And that's where she was found in the exact manner he had explained with clothes matching the description that Rivera gave. So that's proof, right? I mean, Mm -hmm. if he brings you there, he knows what she was wearing, all of that. I mean, if he can describe the scene and then you show up and that's what it looks like. I mean, he's obviously been there before. He knows what to look for. He knows what she looks like. At the very least, you're involved in some way, whether you did it or not. And they don't say this, but... um, I, I'm surprised that they got him to to take them there because he didn't get any sort of deal out of that. You know, that was pretty I wonder, good police work. I wonder if there's any sort of language barrier or anything also, or some sort of intimidation that happened. Or, I mean, listen, I'm not saying that the police did anything shady, but you just don't know how things can yeah. get skewed or... absolutely yeah and that's an important point because christian was a mexican national who had been in the u.s illegally for about four to seven years and on august 23rd the iowa state medical examiner recorded the cause of death of molly as multiple sharp force injuries and the manner of death of course was homicide did they Rivera... find whatever the murder weapon was or did he or no that's a good question. I'm not sure about that. I'll have to look it up. So he was now being charged with first degree murder. During this time, 2017-18, the, or sorry, 2018, the country was going through an election year and things were heated to say the least. No, uh, so no, this- it wasn't. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> I know at this point, after a pandemic, was it really that hard? Uh, you're so right. Oh, sorry. Um, so it's no surprise that this crime was politicized. What wasn't politicized during that time? Mm-hmm. Christian was in the country illegally, after all, and immigration was and has been a hot button issue for decades. Yeah. And definitely with the last election. According to Wikipedia, quote, a spokesman on behalf of the U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services said its systems did not indicate Rivera has any lawful immigration status. So he was, in fact, illegal. Mm -hmm. And, quote, later, U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement confirmed this determination by saying, quote, law enforcement remains absolutely confident that we've correctly identified the suspect as an illegal alien from Mexico, based both on investigative interviews with him and on records checks. I mean, not to be, but why does that matter if we're talking about a murder? Like, that should be what what matters. I don't feel like his... Because it's a talking the- point. It's it, it's people say, you know, he got here illegally and, you know, we all know what Donald Trump said about Mexicans and what they do when they come here. And um, this is a good example for them. And, and yeah. yeah, this does happen. But, um, but also, yeah, it's... I think it happens way more with people who are actually here legally. Like, not, oh. I mean, you know, hello. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, Christian Rivera worked at a farm called Yarby Farms, uh, and this threw a bit of a wrench into the argument that he was an illegal alien coming and committing crimes. So the farm that Rivera worked on was owned by a family of Republican politician (laughs) by the name of Craig Lang. Lang. Apparently, the Lang family allowed Rivera to live rent-free on their land. When they when first investigated, Yarby Farm sources said that they had vetted Rivera's immigration status through a website, Federal E Verify program, and E Verify quickly pointed out that Yarby For- Farms was not even subscribed to its program. Nice. So you're full of shit. Uh, so then the Yarby Farm sources explain that they used the Social Security admin system and clarified that he was in fact. Mr. Riviera, who had given them false information, he presented documentation and went by the name of John Bud, which makes me laugh so hard. 
I mean, this sounds to me like, and I'm not on either side. I'm coming no, here same. from the middle. This sounds like a Republican that's like, okay, now you're jo John Budd from now on. You hear me, Christian Rivera? You know, totally. and he, that's what he answered to, John Budd. I mean, come on. Give him a little spice. <laughs> So to confuse things even further, in a motion for a gag order on August 22nd, Riviera's lawyer said that Riviera was in the United States legally. So who knows exactly what was going on with his status, but in as of 2018, he was not a legal citizen. <sighs> it's like, again, I feel like the focus is just not where it should be. Like this, this should not no. be the focus at all. Uh, President Trump said on August 22nd that, quote, a person came in from Mexico illegally and killed her. We need that wall. We need our immigration laws changed and we need our border laws changed, end quote. Shortly after a campaign email sent by Don Donald Trump for President Inc. committee blamed Democrats' immigration policies for Tibbetts' death. And then Molly's parents kindly asked for time and privacy, but when the president wouldn't stop, Molly's father responded to him. He said, President Trump was heartless and despicable to use Molly's death for political purposes. He made a point of talking about the immigration issues as well. Mr. Tibbet said that, quote, the Hispanic community are Iowans. They have the same values as Iowans. As far as I'm concerned, they're Iowans with better food. And <laughs> oh, it's so true. It's really true. I know. And I'm glad that he like he he makes it kind of like relatable, right? Like, yeah, yeah. They, you're right. It shouldn't. And again, I think they probably were feeling the same frustrations of like, why is this what we're talking about? Like, we just lost our daughter. So yeah. it's something horrific. He then referenced Molly's values by claiming those who appropriate Molly's soul and advancing views she believed were profoundly racist. So Midwestern grit, honesty, and humility. Totally. Her I'm so glad he said that. No, same. Her father also said that in an opinion piece in the local newspaper that, quote, the person who is accused of taking Molly's life is no more of a reflection of the Hispanic community as a white supremacist or of all white people, end quote. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. beautifully said I mean not to toot my own horn but my parents are from Iowa and he just sounds like such an Iowan you know what I mean it's like no that's not relevant right now this you know and I understand some people say no it is relevant he wasn't here illegally and he shouldn't have been here and maybe if he wasn't here it wouldn't have happened and that's probably heart-wrenching mm -hmm. but we live in a world where people come across the border people are fleeing for their lives like just because this happened doesn't mean that every single person that crosses the border is like him you know sure. it's, it's absurd yeah so on august 22nd 2018 rivera was formally charged with first degree murder he was 24 at the time of the crime and he lived in a very rural area in the same county that molly lived in I tried to look up his background because to be 24 and doing this and then to say that you black out and you don't remember things like that sociopathic, that could be psychopathic. So I find it hard to believe that he doesn't have some sort of past, but, it, but if you you're know, not, it's hard to find anything. I just, okay, this is where I feel like murder is not the first step, right? Like you don't go from zero to murder. So I feel like there's, there's gotta be other things, whether it's sexual assaults or there's However, I, bombs, whatever. I mean, he, he could, there's got to be something there, um, but we just don't know. I totally agree with you. However, since the world started over in 2020 and you can't go back and, and reflect and say, well, history shows because yeah. we live in a new world. Look at Matthew Coleman. Look Ugh. at Chris Watts. Yeah. They had no criminal and look at Scott Peterson never touched a person, never got in a fight, never got arrested. One of them never even got pulled over. I think it might've been Scott Peterson. So, and I don't know. I mean, maybe there's more to, there's new uh, psychopathy or, or there's new studies about, about it. But yeah, yeah, we've always been taught in all of our true crime university shows that something happens before that it doesn't yeah. just go zero to murder but we're seeing more of that so i don't know i mean i think in those cases that you're describing that's like family dynamics which i feel like 
I mean, it doesn't make sense, but I feel like there's like a rage and like sense of oh, yeah. snapping that happens in those situations. For sure. As we're like, this was like kind of premeditated. If you're watching a girl, you're stalking a girl, and then all of a sudden she ends up dead in your trunk. I mean, I don't know. That sounds yeah. like something. I mean, but I, unfortunately we don't know. We don't know. Yeah. Whatever he's done hasn't been brought to the surface as of yet. Yeah. His bond was set at 5 million after previously being only 1 million. And this was because the prosecutor believed he was a flight risk because he wasn't a citizen. It'd be very easy to get to Mexico. And surprisingly on August 24th, Rivera changed his legal counsel. His family privately retained a married couple, Chad and Jennifer Fries to represent Rivera. And almost a month later, on September 19th, Christian Rivera officially pleaded not guilty to first degree murder. Now comes the trial. Admit to all that stuff and then be like, oh, just kidding. Anyway, the trial began on May 17th, 2021, after so many delays due to other court proceedings that had been held off due to the pandemic. On May 28th, Rivera was found guilty of first-degree murder by Judge Joel Yates. The judge ordered him to be held without bond. He faces a mandatory sentence of life imprisonment without parole, and the state of Iowa has no death penalty. Woo-woo! And he has already (laughs) been in prison since August of 2018. 27 year old farmer, former farmer hand Christian testified during his trial that he came to the US illegally from Mexico as a teenager. And Yates pointedly rejected defense claims that others were responsible for the crime. Quote, Mr. Fahina Rivera, you and you alone forever changed the lives of those who loved Molly Tibbetts, he said. So then a last ditch effort comes. Two days before the jury delivered that verdict, a man named Arnie Mackey, who was an inmate at an Iowa prison, came forward to claim that another prisoner, Gavin Jones, had allegedly confessed to killing Molly Tibbetts himself. Apparently, Gavin said he did it at a trap house that was known for being associated with sex trafficking. And there was another witness who came forward named Lindsay Voss, not the skier. She said Gavin Jones confessed to her too. And she gave the same story and said that he he told her on that same day. Uh, um, Sorry, Gavin Jones told her that he killed Molly Tibbetts in a trap house, same story. So this was presented to the judge in the hopes of the defense getting a new trial because new evidence was found that wasn't in the first trial. Didn't go over well with Judge Yates. He said the specific details provided in the alleged confessions were vastly different from the story Christian had told himself in the courtroom because he testified. During the hearing, Arnie Mackey recalled Jones saying that he had stabbed Molly Tibbetts to death in the basement of a trap house and then wrapped her body in a tarp. Then the defendant himself took the stand again, and Christian told the judge that two people came to his house that night, forced him to drive to Brooklyn, Iowa, then made him follow Molly while she was running. Rivera then went on to say that he waited in the car while the two of them killed Molly. Regardless of whether or not this happened, wasn't as important at this time. This was a last ditch legal effort to get a new trial and possibly a new defense or come up with a new defense. However, Christian had already admitted to hiding the Molly's body in the cornfield and later even led investigators to the exact location. Not to mention Molly's blood was also later found in the trunk of his car in multiple spots of the car, I believe, actually. Quote, had both versions of events been present, presented at trial, the jury would have had to make a credibility determination, not between the state's witnesses of those of the defense, which is the typical scenario, but between the defendant and his own witness, Yates wrote, that's the judge. He concluded that it was unlikely presenting the alternate theory would have changed the trial's outcome. Jones denied killing Tibbetts to the Associated Press last month and said he had an alibi for the night that she was killed. Both versions presented by the defense differ significantly from the prosecutor's account of the slaying. 
During the trial, investigators testified that Bahina Rivera's black Chevrolet Malibu had been captured on the surveillance tape, like we said. And they go through it in painstakingly detail in the trial. Like it, just for anyone, if you care to go watch court TV, does a lot of the coverage for the trial. And I watched some of this and it's literally like frame by frame by frame oh, Dis- yeah. discussed, talked about it's, it's interesting. Yeah. I find that stuff fascinating. Investigators also said that after he was taken into custody, Bahina Rivera initially said that he had seen Tibbetts jogging before and thought she was hot. He allegedly told authorities he had gotten out of the car to approach her, but got angry when she rejected his advances and blacked out before finding her body in the trunk of his car. In his decision, the judge rejected the defense's claims that the state had suppressed evidence. Bahina Rivera's defense team had argued that prosecutors failed to turn over evidence connecting, connected to a 2019 sex trafficking investigation that they believed could be connected to the Tibbetts case. There is something there. I mean, sex trafficking is rampant in the Midwest. It's it's awful. It's th- That secret is kind of coming to light. So it was a good try, I think, mm-hmm. but... Yates agreed prosecutors had not provided the evidence in that particular investigation. He said there's been no evidence to suggest the man in that investigation was connected to the Tibbetts case, though. And not to be, but you freaking confessed and you showed them where she was. So all of this is just is just to try and mess with the case. It's like it's stupid. Yeah, but I guess that's what defense lawyers do, right? try and just throw anything at you yeah so yates also uh wrote providing an alternate suspect is only a useful strategy when it is believed that the alternate suspect could have committed the offense and gavin jones had an alibi so (laughs) he wrote that he didn't believe information would have altered the jury's decision at all Uh, Going on to say, quote, it is doubtful that adding another possible suspect, one with no apparent ties besides being in the same county as Molly, would have a reasonable probability to change the result of the trial. So on August 30th, 2021, Rivera was sentenced to life in prison without parole. That last ditch effort on the defense's part totally failed, and he will spend the rest of his life behind bars. As he should. Thank goodness. I mean, this judge is awesome. And the cops were awesome. It's just, it's so nice to have a case like this where it seems like everybody was on top of it. And uh, her family is amazing. And they have started the Molly Tibbetts Memorial Fund for Child and Adolescent Psychiatry. It's absolutely amazing. If you want more information, please go to the website. It's givetoiowa.org slash molly. And it's M-O-L-L-I-E. They're doing so many amazing things for kids, tons of outreach. And and this really will help. Like, I, I think it's great when they have, you know, like fun runs to get money and things like that. But actually putting all of the money into helping children, potentially helping somebody with mental illness like her murderer, you know, it's just turning something so heinous into something good and trying to make the world better I think is really beautiful so check that out for sure and that's that's it for the story of Molly Tibbetts yeah what a great way for them to give back it's it's quite amazing um but yeah that's that's it for now and just stay tuned for any updates uh new episodes and make sure to follow us on all social media pretty much across the board it's at murder and retrograde and then until next time be safe and trust your gut bye adios